Here we're going to be looking at sales of receivables and we're going to be looking at the difference between a sale with recourse versus a sale without recourse here for these sales of receivables. So for example here we're going to have Corporation A, the seller here, is going to sell their accounts receivable here to Bank B, the purchaser of these accounts receivable, and it's going to be for $250,000. So Corporation A here is going to a credit or reduce their accounts receivable for 250000 Bank B is going to debit or increase their accounts receivable for $250,000. And Bank B is going to pay out cash $230,000 to uh, Corporation A for these receivables. So they would credit or reduce their cash account here for 230000 and Corporation A would debit or increase their cash account here for $230,000. Now you can see there's a difference here because uh, uh, Corp A only re received 250000 and they're getting cash cash at 230000 So the cash amount here is discounted and that's going to be to some for sales allowances and sales discounts. Now uh, this is how we handle those sales allowances and sales discounts. We set up for Corporation A here, the seller, a do from factor account here which is like an accounts receivable sitting here and then for the bank B, the uh, purchaser here, we have due to the seller here and that would be a reserve payables account here. And what? How, I'll explain how these work work here, but uh, the amount that we would include for our do from factor here would be in this case we estimated that 5% here of the accounts receivable we would have for sales allowances and sales discounts here. So 250000 times the uh, accounts receivable here amount that was sold times 5% gives us $12,500. So we would debit or increase our do from factor here for Corporation Abe for $12,500 and then Bank B here would credit or increase the due to seller account here for $12,500. What these, how these accounts work, and we'll go into detail later, but we accumulate the uh, sales allowances and sales discounts here, and we come up with a balance for those accounts receivable once they're all uh, received here. And whatever the difference is, uh, if there's any difference sitting here, uh, additional amount here that we didn't use, it would be returned here. Bank B would return it here to Corporation A, the seller. Now we get down to this other account here. We label that here loss on sales of receivables. And this is where we came in the, with the difference here between the sales with recourse and the sales without recourse here. So at this point, it would be the same here with recourse and without recourse here. What we're going to do here is we're going to include a financing expense here that Bank B is going to charge Corporation A on these accounts receivable. And it's going to be for 3% of the accounts receivable. So 3% times $250,000 gives us $7,500. So uh, for on those loss for sales, we would debit that here for $7,500 here for Corporation A for that finance expense. And then we would credit it here uh, for Bank B here for $7,500. And Bank B recognized that this is as a financing revenue here on these factored accounts receivable. Okay, that's the same here, with or without recourse. We have to recognize this financing expense here. And, but the difference comes in here for Corporation A on this loss for sales of a receivable. Uh, for, in this case, we're using $3,000. Now, that's the estimated uh, fair value of the uncollectible account. So this is for a uh, sale with recourse here. We're going to have to put in an estimate for the uncollectible account. So let's first go down and look at our definition here. Now, a sales of accounts receivable without recourse, the purchaser assumes the risk of the uncollectability and assumes any losses. So we don't need this recourse uh, liability account here when we have without recourse here. So Bank B can't go back and uh, charge uh, Corporation A here for any sales if there is no recourse, so without recourse. But if we have a sales of accounts receivable with recourse here, the seller guarantees payment here to the purchaser if the customer fails to pay. So what we're looking at here as we set up this special account here, recourse liability account here, which is a it acts as a contra account or it's a, to the our asset accounts here, but it's a liability account and that's that fair value of reserve here for those estimated uncollectibles. So um, Corporation A would credit this uh, 
recourse liability account here for $3,000, and then the debit amount here goes for the loss and sales for receivables here of $3,000. Now remember, this is a probable payment for the uncollectibles that uh, Corporation A would have to pay to, corp uh, to Bank B here. But we're going to look at how we handle both uh, this recourse liability here and also this due from factor and this due to seller once all those accounts receivable have been collected and we've determined our allowances here, our sales allowances, our sales discounts, and then we also determine the bad debt or the uncollectible sales on these accounts. So we'll go into that next. Okay, now let's look at our sales returns and allowances here, our sales discounts and these uncollectible sales. And for example here, we just assume that uh, uh, Bank B here has handled all the accounts receivable. The 250000 have all been accounted for here. So on that $250,000 amount here of accounts receivable, we had sales returns and allowances of $2,000 and we had sales discounts here of $3,000. So for our returns and our allowances and our discounts, we handle that the same with and without recourse here on those sales. So let's go and look at how we'd handle that. Remember Bank B here had this due to seller or this reserve payable account and had a credit amount sitting in here for $12,500. That was 5% of the accounts receivable of $250,000. Now the actual amount that we had experienced here for our returns and our allowances here and our discounts was $2,000 plus $3,000 would be $5,000. Subtract that here from the $12,000 $500 that was estimated and we come up with a balance here. The difference is $7,500. So that's due to the seller. Now corporate A gets this reserve balance back here, that total amount here of $7,500. So let's just say we debit our due to seller account here for $7,500 and then for corporation A they had this reserve accounts receivable due from the factor for that $12,500 amount. So let's just say we'd credit that here for $7,500. Assume it's a cash transaction here. So what we would do is we go up to our cash account here for Corporation A and we debit that here for $7,500. So that takes care of our sales returns and allowances and our sales discounts. But now we come to this uncollectible sales. Now this is where it differs between the sales without recourse and the sales with recourse. And just for to refresh our memory here, the sales receivable, the sales without recourse here, Bank B, the purchaser assumes the risk here of this uncollectability and assumes any losses here. So um, if it was without recourse here, Bank B would take care of all these uncollectible sales. Now if the sales of receivables a sale with recourse here, Corporation A, the seller, guarantees payment to Bank B, the purchaser, if the customer debtor fails to pay here. So in this case we're going to look at it from uh, the perspective here of Corporation A, the seller here. And in this case on those accounts receivable there was $1,000 worth of uncollectible sales. So let's go look at how we'd handle that here. Now Bank B, the purchaser, such as say they had an uncollectible sales account here, so we would debit that for the total amount here of those uncollectible sales of $1,000. Now uh, this is with recourse here. So Bank B can go, come back to Corporation A and ask for that money here for this uncollectible sale. So let's just say they'd credit that out here for $1,000 and then more, move it over to the special account here for Corporation A. Their recourse liability account, they would debit that here for $1,000. So we had $3,000 sitting here, actual amount $1,000. So the remaining balance here in this recourse liability is $2,000. Now the idea here here is that this recourse liability of $2,000 no longer exists since all those accounts receivable have been handled here. So let's just look at our calculations here. So we end estimate uncollectible sales of $3,000. The actual uncollectibles were $1,000. So the liability here is reduced by $2,000. Now the actual payment that was made would have to be made here from Corporation A to uh, Bank B here would be for $1,000 and the estimated amount here would, was for $3,000. So no longer this liability here of all the, the liability here of uh, sitting here of $2,000 no longer exists since all these accounts receivable have been canceled out. So let's go and look at what we do here. So let's just say we had this credit amount here of $2,000. So we'll just debit it out here, remove this liability account. So remember, 
it has to go somewhere. So it has to go to some type of income here. And I'm just going to say income from the recourse liability. We'd credit it here for $2,000. Now, this is a, not a cash transaction. All it is is a paper transaction here. But we have to remove this recourse liability. So we would remove it and recognize it as income here for $2,000. Now, let's look at the example here. Let's say this uncollectible sales. Again, we're estimated at $3,000. But the actual uncollectible sales were, say, actually $5,000. So we had uh, would have to increase our liability here by two thousand dollars in this case. So the total payment would be five thousand dollars that would have to be made to Bank B, the purchaser here. So uh, Corporation A would have to uh, pr write a check or pay some cash here to Bank B for the five thousand dollars for the actual uncollectible sales here. So uh, just remember here this uncollectible sales here for uh, with. It's difference between with and without recourse here. Without recourse here, Bank B, the purchaser assumes the risk of the uncollectability. And with recourse here, that would uh, the seller guarantees payment here. So uh, the purchaser can come back to the seller here to recover any of those uncollectible sales.